What is up, HVAC Control Pro? This is Eric Stromquist with Stromquist Company and Controltrends.com. Have you ever wondered how to reset a Jace 8000? Well, it's pretty easy if you know what you're doing, but like everything else, it's not knowing that causes the problems. So in this video, Brent Burroughs, Control Pro from Atlanta, Georgia, and Intech, one of the guys that's a contributor on Control Trends, is going to walk you through exactly how to reset a Jace 8 thousand so man sit back relax enjoy the video we'll see you on the flip side what's going on guys uh brent burrows here with intech a beautiful little sunday here in the suburbs kind of see out there nice sunny it's hot uh, so here at my house and my wife is 39 weeks pregnant so we are on baby watch just kind of hanging here for whenever this uh this little fellow decides he wants to come out but I figured while I was here, I would do a little video. I had some questions about it this week at work, and so today we're going to be going through resetting a JS8000 to factory default. So let's get to it. All right, over here on the workbench, you can see we've got a JS8000. Uh, I don't have the brand on here. This one actually has uh, was at demo JS and has an expired SMA, but. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing. So I've got it powered up here, 24 volts. With this from Functional Devices, these are really helpful uh, when you're going through and needing to do test stuff just like this or powering up controllers. So I really recommend getting one of these because it's got these extra things to charge your uh, charge computer, charge tools, whatever you need. So you can see we've got this here, we got this Jace, and all we really need besides a laptop is this little USB to micro USB connector. So we'll take that, plug it in, there we go. Go into the laptop, and we're good, and we are set up. So now uh, you can see I got the computer here, I'm gonna swap over, do a screen capture, so we can kind of go through the process. All right, guys, so now we are at the computer. Uh, we have the USB to micro USB plugged into Jace. So now we need to make sure that our comm settings are all set up correctly. So we gotta go to the device manager. Under the ports, we find USB serial port using COM6. So we're gonna look at the settings. And we got our settings in here, 100, 15, 200 bits per second, eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, no flow control. These are the settings uh, that work for doing serial communications with Jace, whether you're using this 8000 or you're using the null modem cable on the uh, 600 or 700. So we got those in there. Now we need to open up Putty and we're going to make a serial connection remember from our device manager that it is com6 speed is 115 200 we'll go there now we will reset the power to our jace and it's important when we reset the power i'm going to turn it off real quick so it's off that when this boots up that you hold the backup button i guess it's the backup restore when it is powered up so that the jace recognizes that it's not going through a normal boot sequence and you can initiate this factory default so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it back on and i'm going to hold down this backup button and we're going to see what comes through on putty so i'm holding the backup button just turn the jace on and you can see it is off and running so i'm going to hold this backup button until I get the prompt on the screen that it's detected and tells me to release it. So just wait here a second. All right, so I just released it. You can see the recovery, it's got the little countdown on it, and we are waiting, so it's initiated. Uh, all we really have to do right now is wait until it goes through its process, tells us to reboot the Jace again, and then it will continue with the factory 
reboot. So we'll wait till we get that message and then we will reset the power. All right, so you just saw the prompt on there. So now we're gonna reset the system off about five seconds. And back on. So there we go. It's coming through. It's going to do everything that it needs to do. Uh, if you're looking for somebody that can explain everything that's happening in this, I am not that person. But there are some uh, really, really smart people that uh, that work at you know places like Stromquist, Tritium, Cochran Supply. They can explain all this if you really want to get into it. So you can see up there that default IP, that 192.168. 1.140, so you know that's been reset, and it's still just going through this boot sequence. So we're going to wait, let it do its thing, and uh, then we're going to log in. All right, so there you see the login. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a, uh, I actually believe it's an American Automatrix, Jace. So the default for it should be Tritium and Niagara. There we go. All right. So you see, guys, we're in there. We're logged in through Putty. What we can do now is come over to Workbench, make that platform connection using our default login of Tritium Niagara. Now you'll find these uh, these defaults will vary with the brains that you have. I know that like for Honeywell, it's Honeywell and Webs. I think Distech Controls is Distech Username Controls Password. Uh, maybe JCI I think is Username Facilities Password Explorer. But everyone's got their defaults. They're not that difficult to find. Uh, but that's why it is important since they're not difficult to find to make sure that you always change these default credentials. You can see down there in the bottom right, it's got the default passphrase and the default platform. I know with uh, newer versions of Niagara, there's actually uh, a part in your workbench, I think in your options, that it you can check the box that it forces you to make the changes to those or it won't even run the station. But Obviously, best practice to change those from the factory default and make sure that your customer has it. Uh, if you are an end user, make sure that you have your system passphrase and you have an administrator uh, username, password to your platforms, to your equipment, because ultimately you purchased the equipment and you should own that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully it helps you out and I will see you guys later. Bye. All right, man, that's great stuff from Brent Burroughs from Intech in Atlanta. Be sure to check him out if you're in Atlanta. Hey, listen, if you are like Brent and have something you want to contribute, please let me know. You can reach out to me at HVACcontrolpro, HVACcontrolpro at gmail.com. And, man, well, I'll edit your video. I'll put it up. We'll give you credit for it just like we did with Brent. But, uh, hey, please contribute. And, hey, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and reach out in comments. Let us know what you're thinking. All right, there you go. We'll see you next time. Peace out.